Hello guys. I think I'm having some issues here. Hey guys. Can you see my presentation? Because I don't. <laughs> okay, I have some troubles, but... So, uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here in Campus Party in the digital audition uh, and today in my lecture we will talk about a little bit about uh, education 4.0 and how to make movement and DIY and another methods or hybrid methods uh, can contribute for, for education. Uh, rephrasing that, uh, how new methodologies can help us to learn better and teach better. So. Uh, before I start, uh, before I introduce myself, I, I want to put some interactivity here. So uh, in some moments, I, I will share uh, uh, a specific page with a uh, QR code or an URL uh, or a link to, to one form. And in that link, you can just click and open on your cell phone or in your laptop, and you will answer one question. So uh, you don't be worried because you don't need to log in, or you, it's completely anonymous. You won't need to uh, be, be worried about that. And you just want to choose your answer and send the, the answer. So I will put some interactive here. And I think it will be great for us. Uh, I hope we have uh, some fun moments here. Okay. Uh, so for this uh, interactivity, it will be 30 seconds. So be quickly to answer uh, because I, I think 30, 30 minutes is it, uh, uh, very, very uh, little time for for talking about education. Okay. So. What about me? Uh, I'm Diogo Garcia Cunha. I'm founder at uh, Digo Maker. It's an edtech based on Brazil. So um, uh, actually, today uh, Digo Maker uh, is is getting old because today is the birthday of Digo Maker. We get in five years old. So I'm very happy to share with the with you that. So you also is completely free to add me on LinkedIn and we can chat and talk about other things like uh, technology or, or education. And I love also machine learning and other contents. And I want to introduce myself. I'm Diogo Garcia Cunha, as, as I said before. Uh, I'm working on improving my English, so I apologize if I make some mistakes. Uh, I'm always looking for learning more and learn better. I'm 20, I'm 25 years old, and I'm married with a beautiful woman. She's um, <laughs> she's on side of me, and on my academic background, I'm electronic in Brazil. I also studied at in Portugal uh, in computer engineer. 
Uh, I did uh, one specialization on business model in George Washington University. And now I'm, I'm studying machine learning anal anal analysis um, on USP, that is the famous university in Brazil. And I, I think it's the, the most important also. Um, and to, to put some fun here, I really love teach science for kids. Uh, actually, I start uh, teaching kids and uh, start t teaching robotics for kids. So I really love that. And I really love physical computing. So basically, it's working with microcontrollers or the brain of the computers. And I love great new things. I, I will share with you uh, my, my project on Google Maker. And I love cooking, uh, especially, especially in that moment we are living uh, about COVID-19. Uh, we have to stay a lot of time at home. So I'm, 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 I'm doing a lot of dishes and my best dish is omelette, okay? So uh, let's talk about uh, a little bit of education, technology and futurology. We talk about in education and uh, around the challenges in education, what is active learning uh, and how make movement and UI can help people to understand and, and learn better, understand content uh, that, uh, that we experience. Uh, I, I will talk about uh, two new methods. Actually, it's a uh, very old method, but it's got be a trend now it, that is gamification and stand. It's uh, the acronym for who, knew, who don't know. It's the acronym for science, technology, engineer, and methods. And then we talk about technology, uh, the tech dilemma, uh, the e-learning on the educational process. Uh, I will talk about physical, physical computing and how this uh, how this methodology can help people learn better or develop new skills. So I will talk about how to code and why code is it's good for people learning and about uh, electronics, especially about hardware hardware development development. And also I will share with you Microjigo. That is the the project the Jigos Maker, Jigos Maker project, my startup project. So uh, uh, to conclude, I will talk about a little bit uh, on what does the future hold for us, especially in education. And I, I hope you all have some fun moments here, okay? Uh, first of all, I want to share one question with you. So uh, I will give, the, give you a little bit more time for, for answer to, to test the, your QR code. So pick up your cell phone and put your camera on the QR code. So automatically you'll be redirected to the URL. Um, and my, my wife is sharing the, the link on the chat on the YouTube. So Let's take some time and I will, I will see if we have some answers, uh, not yet, but at the end of the presentation, we can back again and, and talk a little bit more about the question. So going on uh, about the education, actually, uh, we are living in a very, um, very delicate moment in education because education, as the chart shows, as the cartoon shows, uh, it's basically the same, but uh, it's the same content, but with different approach. But uh, the question is, uh, do we really change the, the education method? So uh, 
I will talk about and put you to think a little bit about it. So this this cartoon is is beautiful because uh, show what is the timeline timeline in education. So uh, since the sixties to to twenty two hundred four, and it's great. So uh, about the education challenge, uh, there there are some premises that uh, it's very harmful to to tackle and to face uh, but we we need to to know that uh, challenge so the first of all is the it's that different countries has different methodologies to teach and also there's different ways to learn so uh, if you go to to United States, or if you go to, um, I don't know, if you go for another, another, another rich, rich country, uh, basically uh, the the learning will be very similar. But in countries like Brazil or Colombia or some some countries in Africa, uh, maybe the the quality of education will be very uh, different and um, so that's a thing to that's a thing to think uh, today we we have uh, an issue that is a lot of students in the same classroom so uh, one teacher for uh, 20 students or so uh, maybe 40 students so it's very diff very difficult teach for 20 or 40 uh, teenagers or children at the same time. So it's a big challenge. And the third, it's the majority of schools are teaching as they taught in the 19th century. So uh, the building uh, is the same, the content is the same, um, the, the, infrastru the infrastructure is the same. So that is very harmful to to take take off. So uh, some some kind of uh, particular countries has a lot of difference between uh, public schools and private schools. So that's a, a big challenge to tackle. And uh, the the point that is in my opinion, is the worst, is the motivate teacher, but not because their fault, because they have low salary, or it's a lack of funding, or the student don't respect them, or they have an easy relationship with uh, uh, the headmaster, or the schools, or the parents, so there, there are a lot of uh, challenges to take in the to take to face. So think about it and how we can improve and make uh, a better educational system. Okay. So question two, uh, I will give more t twenty t so, sorry, the thirty seconds to to answer, but you can. My, my wife is sharing the URL in, on the chat in YouTube. Uh, so you can back at any time to, to answer the question. Okay. Uh, so 50 minutes. Let me see if we have some answer. Yeah, we have one. Okay. Uh, Someone work with uh, extracurricular education. Nice. Uh, question two. We don't have any answers yet, so I will go on with my presentation. So talking about uh, active load methods, I will talk about make movement and DIY because that's the method that we use on Jugo Maker. So. Uh, basically, uh, DIY is a branch of uh, make movement, and it's very similar 
actually uh, there's no much difference between them but make movement it's a protocol between people uh, for create things instead of buy things and DIY it's a branch as I said but generally generally you use existing spots to create uh, handmade things or create something that you like or create create uh, jewelries or something like that so uh, make movement you create things instead you buy and DIY you create things for yourself so the beauty of the the this concept is because uh, make movement uh, with uh, another method like uh, project based learning uh, can can contribute for learning uh, so much because as the the photo show uh, we have different ages with different experience and different uh, uh, different uh, different uh, life experience so that's the that's uh, wonderful because you see one man with around uh, 60 years old uh, having fun building a 3d printer with uh, a teenager with around um, 15 years old so that's great that's terrific uh, so that's that's one that one example of uh, maker experience uh, it's um, class that I did uh, in 20 2017, I think, or so, 2017. So the the point is that that two kids uh, basically construct tr construct themselves uh, one interactive car, one uh, smart car, actually. Uh, so there are a lot of proceeds that they did and then they catch the final product or the final solution that was uh, the smart car uh, they they built the wheels they printed the the shape they coding the hardware they uh, they made the uh, uh, maths about uh, uh, what's the life uh, life life uh, long of battery and and things like that so you can learn playing and you can you can learn uh doing different uh, steps in different concepts so that also is beautiful uh about new new methods to teach or to learn uh, I will share with you gamification and STEM. So uh, basically, gamification, it's not about uh, just video games. Uh, actually, you can use uh, experimental games, like uh, games with, uh, with uh, uh, peace or games uh, with uh, emotions or something like that but the concept concept behind gamification is uh bring the mechanics and the dynamics in a non-logic environment for example in um uh, in a meet in a in a business meet uh almost every time it's a uh, kind of uh, very sick very very problematic uh, um, place so uh, there's a way to to be fun and productive in the same time so gamification bring that uh, methodology and also gamification can can improve uh, team working uh, logic thinking uh, creativity so that's uh, terrific methodology 
So it's 10, it's about uh, uh, science, technology, engineer, and maths, all in a bundle. So you don't have the segments to create things. You just have uh, things. So you can use uh, science to develop uh, um, some, some auxiliary tool, or you can use engineer to solve some issues on the roof or something like that. So you, you don't need to use the only technology. You can use uh, analogs and uh, an analogs uh, technology or, or handmade technology. Uh, that's no problem. So STEM does not mean forget art, literature, PA, uh, human nature or um, human contact. Uh, STEM means uh, put all, all the segments of humanity in a bundle and explore them using uh, different tools. So uh, basically the, the, the advantage of STEM it's because uh, it's very e easy to integrate with the curriculum. So it's great to implement in your school, for example. So that's another example uh, about one, one of my classes. Uh, that little guy, his uh, autism, so uh, he, he, he has some some issues with uh, interacting with other people or with uh, another ch children uh, with the same age. So uh, actually, the gamification works so well that that kid uh, implement all the game, construct all the code, building all the hardware, and then play. And we play together, actually on the uh, picture number six, you can see that. Uh, and he, he, he had so a lot of fun moments. So that's beautiful because um, even if uh, a children or a person has uh, a cognitive issue or a neurocognitive issue, uh, you can learn better and improve the knowledge uh, and improve the skills. And that's really great. So about technology, I, I think uh, uh, <laughs> it's it not like that GIF, but I, I think uh, everybody has some problem with technology. So let's go on. I will put the third question uh, about technology and I, I want to share with you some, some quick notes uh, about that uh, subject. So I will give to you more five seconds. Uh, while that, I will see if I have answers. Yes, two answers on question one. No answers on question three. So let's go on. Uh, the technology dilemma. So that basically dilemma, it's a situation uh, in which a choice has to be made between two possibilities. And actually it's very common in uh, entrepreneurship and engineering problems. So basically uh, the technology dilemma, it's about uh, uh, you design something, uh, you design uh, something for uh, uh, a specific group, and then you stood about their, their, their problems, about their situations, their issues, and go on. And then you design the thing, you put the thing on the market, you expect something about the group, and when people say that technology, when when people uh, see that technology, uh, they they think about they think something about the technology, 
but when they buy our way then when they use the technology they they did uh they do uh another another thing or they had uh a lot of problems so basically that's the technology dilemma you have to abstract one or more um difficult in society and transform that in a solution but generally people will will not use uh your solution as you think so that's the problem another problem is that problem uh so basically you create the technology for uh don't have any issues but uh generally uh mechanism or mechanical things or digital things uh they they are beauty to have problem so that's it's another um that's another um technology dilemma so about the uh, physical computing i i will uh talk uh, very quickly about that so uh just to put you in mind uh, machines and algorithm algorithm and uh, in the workplace are expected to create uh, uh more than 100 million new rules but causing 75 million uh jobs to be displaced but actually if you if you do this equation uh machine learn will create a lot of a lot of jobs so the importance of physical computing it's um uh, uh teach code and hardware for for the the next generation uh because actually we are we all are uh users of uh, technology technology but just few people uh understand how that things work so uh technology there's a detail because you can't return uh in technology uh for example after files has been discovered nobody eats raw food no more uh except for sushi <laughs> so <laughs> the uh the code uh it's uh basically in in development countries it's it's consider uh the new english because uh it's very important for the futures of working um and also learn to code increase your logic skills uh it's uh, an unlimited development so you can think in something and then you can create with code uh you, you, and you don't be a genius for create for code uh there are a lot of tools now that facilitate the the code creating the code building so that's a great thing uh how about the uh, electronic uh electronic and hardware in, in general uh increase creativity and motor skills so it's a very good thing to to incentivize your children to to learning in the proxy uh it's basically science applied in proxy uh, uh and we need to stop the next generation uh being just a user and make them uh being um not not a tech not a technical uh developer but um uh, they they need to understand what they are buying what they are consuming what they are um uh, accept with uh, contracts or something like that in, on the internet so uh electronic and hardware it's a subject that involves a lot of content so it's uh like uh, gamification or 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 stand it's very good for thinking very good for development so uh that that is uh uh quickly video about the uh, micro jigo but that's the first version uh we will put it in uh open source hardware 
uh, very soon. So uh, keeping looking on our webpage or, or Facebook, Instagram, we'll share this project uh, uh, all to free, okay? So I, I will share this video, uh, I will play. So I don't know you are uh, here. So basically the idea is healthy uh, children and people with uh, neuro, neurocognitive uh, uh, disease help to learn and increase, increase skills. And it's a very fun project because you can learn using um, just some magnetic connectors and it's very simple simple to to build and code so basically it's that so about technology i i have just more two minutes so i will be quickly here uh don't worry teachers will not be replaced by robots not for now but who knows uh for um i don't know 10 years no just kidding uh about 50 years but teachers always will be important for education. So don't worry about that. So what does the future hold for us? Actually, I don't know because it's the future, but just kidding. Uh, I, I will put some guesses here and I, I, I want to think about that. So in short term, uh, actually uh, in very short term, uh, make a movement and stand will be in 70 uh, percent of all classroom gamification and design thinking is already uh, using in private schools for, for example project-based learning it's a very very good uh, methodology to, to to teach and um, put some creativity in into the classroom uh virtual reality and augmented reality as recre recreation and ed educational play uh and think based learning uh also it's a, a good uh, methodology and will be in every classroom very soon so basically pbl and tbl uh are a little bit different but similar uh pbl is about construct constructed learning, uh, constructing things. And TBL is about not just memorizing, but also implement things. And in the long term, uh, I think gamification, e-learning with uh, machine learning, uh, lifelong learning, uh, actually living is learning, and physical computing uh, will be the trends of uh, how to learn better. So uh what does the future hold for us it's a uh, very uh experienced uh, education um basically uh with uh, technology but not only digital technology so you can use with another things and another experience uh and a bonus thing is that we will we'll need forever it's inspired teachers. So uh, get the inspired to inspire your your students. So uh, let's to the final question, and then I will uh, I've done with my presentation. Uh, Thirty minutes is it's very quick to to share about the education technology, but uh, I. I think we can think about how we can improve the education locally, regionally, and help everybody uh, learn better. So uh, I think that's it. We have some answers here, but I can share with you uh, later if you uh, add me on LinkedIn. So. I'm very glad to be here and I'm very grateful for all the audience 
and campus party. Thank you very much.